Hey, what's up? In this particular video, I want to talk a little bit about working for yourself versus working uh, for somebody else. Okay, now they both have their advantages and disadvantages, and we're going to look at the, each one. Now, if you're a new DJ starting out, okay, probably your best bet would be to work for somebody. Okay, you know, maybe go and, and apply for one of these other DJ companies that, uh, you know, that has, has multiple systems. That's probably your best bet. And uh, you may not want to try doing it on your own right now. And so that's a good way to get the training that you need to become a great DJ as well. That's what I would recommend doing. But a lot of times, though, that with a lot of these DJ services, I know that a lot of them in our area, uh, here in Northwest Florida, they make you sign a non-compete, uh, or non-compete, I think is the way you say that, uh, agreement. Now, what is that? Well, basically what that means is that they're not going to train you, and then you go off and form your own company and become their competition. Usually the non-compete uh, agreement uh, usually states that you can't... Um, you know, start your own business and work within a hundred mile radius uh, for about two or three years or so, something like that. I'm not sure exactly. It varies in different areas, but uh, they usually do that because they don't want to train you, and then you become a great DJ and you know be, be competition for them. All right, so that's one drawback you have to look at. But then again, you can get some benefit, beneficial training if you do it that way. Now, working for yourself, like I do, and like Brian does, and like uh, Jonathan and a lot of others do, it has some benefits as well. I'll tell you one benefit that I like from it. Number one, you don't have to answer to anybody, and that's that's one thing I like about that. Because if I go and meet with a bride and groom, you know, the bride that asks me, "Hey, you know, I want to uh, do this or that or this or that," I can make the decision right then if I want to do it or not. I don't have to say, "Well, uh, let me go check with my supervisor," you know, to see if we're allowed to do that. Now I don't have to do that. I can do everything myself, and, that, and that's one of the advantage that I like about uh, working for myself. You know, because being your own boss, you know, I, you just get to roll with it. You know, you get to make all the decisions, and that's that's the best part about it. When you work for somebody else. You have to do things the way that they train you to do and the way that they have their particular principles. So that's the bad thing about that. But again, if uh, you're just starting out, that might be the thing that you need to do. You need to you know, get your feet wet and, and learn the trade of, of how to become a great DJ. So I would recommend uh, working for somebody that has uh, multiple systems. Now, do I have other DJs that work for me? Well, no, I don't. And I'll tell you why I don't. Because... Uh, well, right now I just I feel like I'm just able to do everything myself. But you know I'm getting a lot more gigs and uh, things of that nature. And you know re, you know things really start to really really pick up. I may have to consider hiring another DJ. But the old rule of thumb is that, that I've always learned is if you want to do something right, do it yourself. Okay. And I've had other DJs call me up asking me for work. And you know and I've got I've got several uh, trade agreements that I have with other DJs around here. You know like one of us is ever booked, I can recommend somebody. But I don't really have anybody working for me. As uh, far as that goes, I usually do uh, everything myself, and you know, quite frankly, to be honest with you, uh, doing everything myself is the only way that I'm, I'm assured that it's going to be done right. I mean, I wouldn't mind training another DJ uh, if I became overbooked and things like that, but who knows? I may come later on. But right now, yeah, I like doing everything myself. That works out uh, to be the best thing, at least for me. Now, what do you charge if you're going to decide to work for yourself? Okay, we've seen a lot of videos on that, and you really have to figure out. What is the market in your area? Now, for example, here in Northwest Florida, you know, the average price uh, for a wedding reception for a good professional DJ is going to be around $500. Now, I realize that's a lot more in some areas. Like, I think I've priced DJs down in Tampa and Miami, places like that, and they're, you know, a lot more. Like, say, eight or $900, possibly maybe $1,000. Maybe it's more or less where you're at. But that's what you want to do. You want to check uh, other DJs around your area and... You know, find out which ones are the cheapest, which ones are the most expensive, and try to stay somewhere kind of in the middle. That'd be the best thing to do. And uh, you know, you don't want to be the most expensive, and you don't want to be the uh, the cheapest either. But you want to kind of try to keep your average around the uh, around the middle of it, and that'll that'll really help out a lot. So uh, that's uh, something you may want to keep in mind. But now, as I mentioned before, you know, you can't just go out and buy equipment and just start becoming a DJ, and boom, all of a sudden, you know, you're getting all these gigs and stuff like that. It just doesn't work that way. But like I said, for you new guys, yeah, I would recommend uh, working for somebody and uh, learning the ropes, get your feet wet, and uh, doing that maybe for a couple of years or, or however long, and then start your own business after that. But uh, yeah, if you work for a, 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 another DJ service, they're probably going to make you sign a no-compete comp uh, agreement, and probably if I hired somebody else, I'd probably do the same thing. I just think that, uh, well, that's, it's a good thing and it's a bad thing. It protects everybody uh, when you look at it that way. So that's one drawback you have from it. Okay, hopefully this has been some uh, help for you. If you have any questions at all, feel free to email me or just drop me a comment right down here, and uh, we'll talk about it. Practice and enjoy.